it is our desire that you will be refueled. Are some of you beginning to feel a little refueled because it helps to kind of get away from the home front and, and to come here? Now, to get started, the average adult lasts in a day 16 to 20 times. I wonder how much kids laugh. Let's take a look. <laughs> the average child laughs 350 times a day. This is what we're going to do now. We've got to put on our kid persona. Stand up where you are, look at someone from another table or across the room, see if you can get eye contact with them. Everybody does it. Then, do you have eye contact with them? You got just someone, you, you, don't, you don't, now, okay. Now give them your best blah, 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 and 10 <laughs> seconds of laughter. That's what I want. 10 seconds, <laughs> laugh it up. I noticed the other day in, uh, actually Eli was in teen church when I noticed him and we were passing the microphone around for teens to pray and Eli took it. And, and uh, Eli understands some things about prayer. We talked about it too. He knows that kids sometimes when they pray, God hears in a whole special way because God knows how much kids Kids believe God answers prayer, and they trust God in a cool kind of way. So we have something to learn from kids. So I asked Eli if he would come and pray for all these wrinkled people. <laughs> Will you do it, pal? All right, let's pray. Eli, would you please lead us in prayer? Mm -hmm. Dear God, please make these people um, understand with... Um, your messages today, and please bless Pastor Timer and everybody, all of you learn it, and please bless Pastor Timer while he teaches kids, amen. Amen, and please bless Eli and his brothers, his family, and please bless all the kids that are in this church and every church represented here that the kids could come to know and love and follow Jesus more and more every day. Amen. And Miss Ashley Novak, if I might introduce you. I asked at Ashley, and when I saw her leading music at Kids Church, I said, Ashley, I can just tell that the love that you have for Jesus just comes right on out. And I asked if you would lead songs for the wrinkled people. So let's stand, and you're going to have to do actions here, but you look at the words there, and let's worship. All right. So if you would like to take your outlines, it's going to help you. So you don't have to take a lot of notes. I did write down some of the main concepts, and today we're in that session, which is exhausted, overwhelmed, or replenished. And every thought action, feeling, takes energy. When we expend energy, we need to be refilled, refueled, if you will. If you were to look back at this last, not this week, because I know how hard it is when you get out of town, you, know, you, you pay for it, don't you? So God bless you for making the effort. But go back to last week, uh, a regular week that is incredibly difficult, okay? And if you were to say, um, how did my energy level hold out, my capacity to be able to expend energy and then to be replenished? How full was my tank? And I want you to think about it in different categories and actually write it down on your piece of paper. When you think of your last week, your average level of physical energy, uh, just being feeling uh, awake and alert and uh, comfortable. Um, how, how refilled were you then? 
How about the next category, your emotional tank? And this is not only your feelings, uh, but it's also how you connect to people. Um, how replenished were you? What was your average level last week on a scale from one to five? How about your mental energy? Your ability to stay concentrated, to work through problems, to still be positive? Um, or were you uh, confused and, and had a hard time staying focused? How replenished did you keep that tank? And the fourth energy reserve we have is spiritual energy. And this is feeling connected to God, but feeling connected to God in such a way that you sense his leading and his guiding, and you, and you feel compelled to follow it. Um, how replenished did you feel? So we're going to talk about those different levels, but let's do it in a way that's real practical. Throughout uh, our session today, um, we're going to have times that we're going to real quickly break out and visit with another person uh, or two and just share our responses. And then we're also going to have times as we move from energy resource to energy resource discussing it, we're going to pray over it. Uh, we are the body of Christ. We need to build each other up for that. And part of that building up starts right now. So would you please, in groups of two or three, no more than three, two or three, share what numbers you just wrote down um, on your list. But what I'm going to do is ask that each person would take only one minute, share your numbers, and say that here is the one area I would like to grow in or I'd like to get more replenishment in, okay? And I'm getting out. Go ahead and, and get to your groups of two or three. Can you work that out, please? And then I'm going to tell you, actually, I'm going to be such a tacky guy that I am going to put a minute timer on it. And you're going to hear the beeper go off and you're going to know it's the other person's turn. All right. Are you ready for the first person? All right. And you could be in groups of two or you could be in groups of three. If you're in, if you're in a group of two, yeah, okay, never mind. Ready, go. It's time for the other person. Okay, thank you. How many people here found uh, it really easy to identify what energy level you wanted to raise up. It was just easy for you to identify. I hope that you come, even if it wasn't easy to identify, I hope you come with a sense of expectation during this conference that God really does want to refuel you. And the reason is your job is absolutely exhausting. It's one of the most labor-intensive jobs in the church, and oftentimes, I'm sorry to say this, one of the more underappreciated. I know it's not that way in every setting, but it is a pretty common scenario. Now, the answer to staying replenished in such an environment is not just better time management. It is time management, but it's much more than that. I would say it's priority management. Now, if Jesus were here and you could ask him any question, here would be a good question. Jesus, just what should be my priorities? Because I wrestle sometimes getting my priorities in order. Do you? Well, 
looky here. It just so happened. A guy comes up in Mark chapter 12, one of the teachers of the law, and noticing that Jesus seemed to give them a good answer, he said, of all this stuff, of all the commandments, what is the most important? It is the most important question. And Jesus answers about priorities. He says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your and with all your and the second is like the first. Love your neighbor as your that's what's important. That's the priorities. Now, I believe that there's a better definition to love than just feel good about someone. I think a better definition is being wholeheartedly committed to the other person's best interest. Actually, wholeheartedly committed to their best interest no matter what it costs you. And if we used that to describe what love is in these passages, you know what we would be saying? I want to be wholeheartedly committed with my body to your best interest, Lord, no matter what it costs me. I want to take the energy, the energy pool of my heart and my emotions and my desires, and I want to have them wholeheartedly committed to you no matter what it costs me. And I want to do the same thing with my mind and also with my, uh, and also with my spirit, with my soul. I've got them in different orders here than in Scripture because I'm going to go through them in different orders here. Now, if you committed these energy pools to the Lord, each one of them, what do you think he would do? What, what, what would he do with them? He would say, I want for you to be able to use them so that my kingdom would be advanced in your life and, and you would enjoy it. So what we give him, he gives back. And isn't that the lesson? And certainly isn't that how we know what love is? Doesn't it even say that in 1 John 4, 19, that we love because he first loved us. We could do none of this if we did not first experience Jesus' love to us. God was so wholeheartedly committed to us that he gave us his only son so that in him we might have life. But life is holistic, and now we're going to give him our body resources, our uh, emotional resources, our mental resources, and even our spiritual resources. When we do, he fills our tank. And that's what we're going to look at today. So let's take a look at each one of these energy sources. And this is why it's so important. You see, uh, God gives us these energy sources and expects us to exercise them. When we use them, we get surprise more capacity, but we must use them and also rest. He designed rest. Now, too much reserve with no exercise is atrophy. And I just cleaned out these gas tanks today. And I know, because it smelled like gasoline in this room, all right, um, but old gas sitting in a can too long is no good just like it is in our life. But what happens if you're go, 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 and there's never any fuel put back in? That's exhaustion. So let's look at our energy sources as something that we want to exercise and expand, and then uh, we want to go ahead and have refueling in there. The first one is our physical energy sources. This scripture says, um, 1 Peter 4, if anyone serves, how do they do it? They do it with the what? Strength. Who provides it? God provides it. Why? So that in all things, God may be what? Through Christ Jesus. Our energy resources is measured by quality. Oh, excuse me. Quantity. Because our physical reserves is a matter of how we develop capacity to perform in our bodies. Now, 
through history, sometimes people have struggled in other philosophies, and it even came into the Christian church, Gnosticism, that says our body is bad and the spirit is good. That's not true. God redeemed us, spirit and body. He wants our bodies to be fully enjoyed and fully utilized. And as a matter of fact, we are so well connected together. If your physical condition is not working well, guess what? Everything else suffers. Everything is built on how well we take care of our bodies. And what I have found that in the church, we generally overstress our mental and our excuse me, emotional and mental, and we underuse our physical and our spiritual. So how do we exercise this and regain better capacity? Well, so let's all feel guilty for a while and talk about exercise. Can we do that? All right. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. Um, they did a study in a nursing home, 86 to 96 year old patients, and they took a certain group, and 86 to 96 year olds, and they said, all we want you to do is exercise for 30 minutes a day, three days a week. We're going to do it eight weeks. And the other group, they did nothing with. Do you realize that for these seniors, in eight weeks, they increased their strength 175%, and they're balanced by 48%. And if it works there, how much more do we need it? Now, what's the problem? We could all say it together. Why do we not exercise more? I don't have enough time. That's a lie. That's a lie from hell. It is. It is a lie from hell. I love this poem. It's a great book. Tim Hensel, When I Relax, I Feel Guilty. It's a classic. I went out, Lord. Men were coming and going, walking and running. In spite of all their grand efforts, they were still short of time. Lord, you must have made a mistake in your calculation. Lord, I have time. I have plenty of time. All the time you give me, the years of my life, the days of my years, the hours of my days, mine to fill quietly, calmly, up to the brim. It is a lie. We don't have time. We could tell the truth. You know what the truth would sound like? I don't want to take the time. Thank you. Preach it. That's not in my priorities. Or that might be important, but unfortunately, I've scheduled other priorities in front of it. Take charge of it. You know what its kissing cousin is? Uh, its kissing cousin is that phrase, that maybe you can guess it, because I just forgot it. What is it? <laughs> oh, uh, it is, I have too much to do. Lie. I, I know what we all mean while we say it, but the truth of the matter is God does not give us more than uh, he would want us to do in a comfortable amount of time. The problem is prioritizing, and how did we get out of whack with that. And unfortunately, what begins, because we are in a holy profession, we do holy things and we leave something undone, and this is one of the holiest things we could do. Is that right? Yes. Tell me your story. Can you tell me your story, Christy? Oh, I, mean, I need a microphone. Mr. Microphone, will you? Oh, I, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but I just did. Go ahead, stand up, please. Turn around. Um, hi, I'm Christy. Some of you guys will know me and some will get to know me. Um, I uh, battled um, weight issues most of my life, and a horse accident almost eight years ago really put me down for the count because um, I had two herniated discs, and so did all the methodical things to try to heal that, and nothing was happening. And, and on top of that, because this was not filled, because because there was something wrong with me, but I was not really seeking God. I was just trying to seek what I thought was going to be a quick fix. This tank was always empty, so these were always strained. And so I finally just got on my knees back in 2010, and I said, God, I can't do this anymore. I said, you've given me a calling that I absolutely love and never thought that I would do, which is hanging with children. Um, and I've got two of my own, and I can't keep up. I can't do this anymore. I'm burnt out here, exhausted here, 
and there's nothing in this tank. And so um, just through a lot of prayer, we saw different doctors, so on and so forth. And two surgeries later, um, God healed me. And then I recognized that. And so I said, well, I'm not going to just use this and just say, okay, thanks. You did it great. I said, okay, you prepared me, and now show me where you want me to take this healthy temple that you've given me. And so I started exercising and um, learned some equations of eating better and journaling and and, um, took on a great, great exercise regimen called Jazzercise. Huge fan. I now teach it. And um, 18 months later, I have lost 140 pounds. And so, um, (laughs) and so, but with that said, um, you know, it always takes a balance. And so my sheet's not perfect, that's for sure. But um, what I can say is I know why he did it because last year he put on my heart to run an all-summer day camp. And so we ran 10 weeks of basically VBS every week. And had it not been for him taking charge and refueling my physical tank, there's no way that we could have fulfilled his mission and his plan to bring children to know him better and families into his church. So that's my Christy, thank you. New Year's resolution, (laughs) right? Unfortunately, just more commitment doesn't work. There are two things that work to change on this one, and you mentioned one of them. One of them is that we need to tie it in to a bigger purpose. And when we see ourselves as called by God to serve Him, and this is part of that calling, it attaches it to a higher level of importance. And the second thing is we need ritual in our lives. Um, uh, Also, some things that will help with getting that rituals are one-time action steps. A book that will rock your world and much explain in detail about this uh, is not a Christian book, but there's a lot of true principles here. So, you know, it fits the Bible. The Power of Full Engagement. It's in the library. It's one of our conference books. And it's going to talk about how you replenish each of these energy sources. Um, Before I move from this topic, can I have the two microphones in the room? Um, I want us to pray over how it is that we replenish ourselves physically, not just for our exercise. Also think about our rest. Think about our diet. Think about our sleep. And rather than me just telling you more cute stories about it, because I've got plenty of them, I think I'd rather do something significant. I'd rather us as a body of Christ pray for one another. If you would be on one side, Suze, Cheryl on this side, um, let's have at least three or four people pray for this area of replenishment in our life that we could begin some new patterns, new ways of thinking, and get uh, filled physically. Um, and fill that tank, exercise it. Um, and you can have your eyes closed or open, uh, hold your hand up when you think that you've got a thought uh, to pray, and let's have just at least two or three. Lord, here are some prayers that the body of Christ would bring to you about getting refueled in our physical energy source. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we all do know very well that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, we are your creation. And, uh, and, and our, our, our bodies work together, and that's, uh, that's your idea with, with, the, with the rest of, uh, of all of our faculties. And uh, we pray right now for, uh, for the, uh, the, the bodies in this room. Uh, give us wisdom, Lord, and give us action to, uh, to care for them in a way that honors you and uh, so that you can use our bodies uh, and our minds and our emotions and our spirits to, to, to minister to, to other people. Uh, to be your hands and feet working in this world which you love so much. Lord, remind us that you gave us sleep as a gift. And when we cheat ourselves of those hours of sleep that you've given us as a gift, we really aren't helping ourselves or the kingdom. You give us that time to recreate and to that the, everything gets knit back together again. And so, Lord, we confess when we do cheat those hours of sleep, um, we ask for your forgiveness, and we ask that you would give us the confidence to know that you've only given us what we can do. You're not asking us to do more than what we are able. Help us to honor that gift of sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Let's take a look at the emotional energy. The capacity and emotional energy is measured by quality. It goes from negative to positive. And this is how we connect with other people and also how we feel. And you'll note that there are times when you come home, at the end of the day, your tank is empty here. You have a tendency to want to complain about other people, don't you? The problem is, where do you go to do that? It's not really healthy to do it at home. And when you experience negative emotions, by the way, does that fill your tank or empty it? It depletes it. How do you replenish that emotional tank so that you uh, have these things in the Bible, like the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, of course that comes from the Holy Spirit. But does the Holy Spirit also use circumstances to train us to exercise those gifts? I believe He does. That's why I believe the Holy Spirit gives us things like hobbies, things we like to do. Now, think of this. What is one activity that you love to do? And if you had three hours of extra time this next week and you could put it any which way in the week you wanted, split it up, whatever else, what would you do? Think, think. Everybody have one? Raise your hand if you do. Oh, I'm so glad. Sometimes, how many people are doing this next week? Way to go. Do we sometimes need to give ourselves permission to do those things so that we can practice some of these kinds of feelings? I do believe that we do. And then, guess what? When we meet those difficult circumstances and our emotional bucket has been replenished, it's easier for us to exercise those gifts uh, uh, of, of the fruit of the Spirit to other people as well. So, I end this comment with watch out for negative emotions. They will drain the tank. Now let's take a look at the mental energy. If this is measured by quality, how much, and this is quantity, how good, negative or positive, what do you think mental focus is measured by? Hint, this is not kids church, is it? All right, okay, you're a real tough audience. Come on, work with me here. Oh, you're so bright, kids, you're so bright. Here we go, it is, it's measured by focus. Uh, and that's because um, uh, we want to move in one area from being distracted and scattered to being able to not only problematically and creatively go through problems, but also do it with a positive, positive optimism. That is absolutely golden. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, memorize it. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, do what? Think about such things. Now, refuel your mental take with a positive, faith-filled outlook. How many of you ever do that? I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I can't believe it. You've done it? All of us. And that's a lie of the enemy. Again. Because he would want to get your whole mindset going that way. That's the battleground right there. And could we not have kingdom eyes and go into our life and with a, with a God of the universe who's willing to, to, to actually literally knock down the gates of hell, would he not, how would he, if he didn't, he who did not even spare his own son but gave him up for us, how will he not also give us all things? What are we doing? Whining or complaining or thinking it'll never happen or being afraid of that. Let's have a positive mindset. Uh, and it is contagious in the office, by the way. Um, not quite as contagious as the negative ones, because they, they spread pretty fast, too. But that is, now what activities do you do to refuel your mind? I'm going to take some um, ideas from the group. How do you refuel your mind? If you work straight through the day you're not productive enough. You need to refuel your mind. 
by the way. How do you do it? Uh, they did a test, by the way, uh, on uh, some guys that the Army did it for shelling. Uh, how, many mortar, how many shell rounds can you hit on target? Uh, and they had three days of training. And they took one group and this group, and they said, you guys work all day long on it. Don't take a break. And they didn't. This group here, I want you to work uh, all uh, in, the, in the afternoon. I want you to all stop and take a nap. First day, this group won. Second day, this group won. Third day, this group won by more. And the power of just taking a break and getting replenished. And in that case, it was rest. But maybe there's some other things. What things are creative that you do that stimulate that right side of the brain? What books are you reading? Does that replenish you? How many people use TV? It's junk food. It can be good, but too much is junk food. Uh, how about in your office, in your area? Do you have a collective break together where people relationally get together and have a, uh, I can't say hot fudge sundae, granola bar? No, that's not good either. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's fruit and vegetables. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. Let's take, a look at the, let's take a look at the next one. And the next one is our spiritual energy. Capacity is measured by force here. And what I mean by that is that in our spiritual energy, it's like our whole energy reserves kind of begins as a pyramid down here. They all affect each other. But this, uh, if this is depleted, this one has a hard time flourishing. And um, these two are built on it. But you know what pulls the whole person along? This one here is called your sense of purpose. It, call, it, it is your calling. And as believers in Christ, make no doubt about it. Uh, we are called for a higher purpose. And you guys and gals, please don't take lightly the gift that God has given you when he called you into a ministry role working with children, which is the most important ministry in the church. Wow. And for that sake, you would do all the rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you're going to find rest for your what? As we find our, men, our spiritual energy, it is absolutely vital that we spend time with him and hear him call our name and show us where he's leading us. Uh, the most important hour you spend for your kids and the people you serve is the hour you spend every day before the Lord. No doubt. Or 30 minutes or whatever it is. So, how do you spend time with him? How do you hear his direction? I hope that over this conference time, you have a chance to take some inventory there and see if there's some replenishment. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you more about this in the gaps because I'm a strong advocate of just some ways how you order your private world, your journaling, and your prayer life. It's vital. Um, it's just vital. It's the most powerful energy. It pulls the other along because it will give you motivation, perseverance, and direction. I'm going to do something few pastors ever do. I'm going to end on time. <laughs> um, that's because I'm hungry, and we have prime rib, too. Oh, yes. But uh, one thing that we... Uh, if I had a little bit more time tonight, but we're going to do that this weekend, we'd have taken more time stopping and praying through this together. We need to do that. And a, a kind of a prayer that I have for us as a conference so that we can re be replenished. As a matter of fact, I just want to, I want to pray it over you right now. And you, this is eyes open prayer. 
okay? Because I don't know about you, but when I go to conferences, I struggle. Because I struggle sometimes, it's easy for me to, oh, compare is easy for me sometimes with envy. It's sometimes easy for me to be judgmental. It's sometimes for me to easy stereotype. This is the body of Christ. We are here to be fueled together. And I want to pray for that. God, thank you that you've given us priorities that we can give our whole life to you, our, our body, our, our emotions, our mental capacities, and our soul itself. Offer it to you for your best, it be committed to your best interest at those things that you would use, and you'd replenish it. But Lord, so that we might better discover what that means this weekend as we're uh, refueling, please, Lord, protect us from... Uh, some of the traps of the enemy, like protect us from any type of envy, any type of judgmental uh, attitude. Protect us from pride or trying to pretend that, you know, we, we don't have it all together. <laughs> protect us from that one. Um, Lord, instead, expose any of those lies and give us uh, care and a concern for one another. Uh, because that's how you care for us. We pray it in Jesus' name.